Hello everyone on Tech Syndicate. This is Z-Train and today we are going to be talking about cooling. So, most people uh, know some basic cooling methods such as passively cooled, air cooled, and liquid cooled devices, but they do not know about things such as thermoelectric coolers, also abbreviated as TEX. Now these operate off what's called the Peltier effect, which I'm going to explain real quick before I show you one in real life. So most people know that if I take wire, in this case it will be green, and I put something with a higher resistance in between it, that uh, higher resistance bit of material will get hot. The opposite also holds true if I take two bits of wire and I put something that is a lower resistance than the wire in between it, it will get cold. So by uh, using this little physics uh, fact, people decided that, uh, hey, we can make coolers that operate off this principle. And it basically works like this. You take something that is a higher resistance, stick something that is a lower resistance underneath it. You have higher resistance, lower resistance, and you keep doing this and you basically build a three-dimensional grid out of it. So the actual thermoelectric cooler looks something like this. And then one side gets really, really hot, and the other side gets really, really cold. Because if you remember the whole, every action has an opposite lethal reaction thing. Yeah. Uh, well, the thermoelectric coolers I'm going to be using today are approximately 100 watts, which has quite a bit of cooling capability. The cold side on mine gets down to about negative 15 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, which means that the hot side gets very, very hot as well. Uh, now these are ceramic and they're very thin. Uh, they're usually measured in millimeters. Uh, so since you have something so hot and so cold right next to each other, you have to pull the heat away. So uh, what I did is I stuck a normal CPU heatsink on top of my thermoelectric cooler, just put some thermal paste in between there, and that way the hot side gets cooled off by the heatsink and the bottom side still stays very cold. Uh, now, I'm going to be doing this for the first time. Uh, I've never cooled a computer with a thermoelectric cooler before. Uh, so I'm going to be uh, interested to see how well it actually works. So I'm going to cut the video now and go to my camera, and we'll see how it works in real life. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone, welcome to real life. Sadly, I do not have a tripod, so my video will probably be a tiny bit shaky. Now this right here is the thermoelectric cooler on the bottom of uh, this heat sink. This is a Cooler Master uh, Hyper uh, 212 Plus, I believe. Uh, I got this quite a while ago. So real quick, we have a positive and ground wire coming off of the thermoelectric cooler. And then the fan, you have your uh, normal 4-pin that would go to your CPU. Uh, basically snip the green and blue wire. All you need is the yellow and black. Your yellow being your 12 volt positive and your black being your ground. Now this right here is our guinea pig computer. It's an old HP. Uh, it's one of those ones that fold apart. Uh, I've already taken apart the uh, CPU cooler which is over there just because uh, it was definitely a two hand job and something I couldn't do with camera in one hand. So basically I'm going to take a paper towel and just wipe off the residual thermal paste because I'm going to be applying new thermal paste to the bottom of this. Now this isn't how you'd want to remove thermal paste on a you know, computer that you're uh, building. Paper towel definitely is a uh, you know, static sort of generator, but I live in Florida so I don't care. And like I said, it's a guinea pig computer. So, I'm going to go get my thermal paste out, and I will be right back. Okay, this is actually my third attempt at doing this, so I'm going to run through everything real quick. Uh, I have my thermoelectric cooler right here, uh, hooked up to the CPU heatsink, which is connected to this power supply. Uh, if you want to get your power supply to run without a motherboard, you need to take the green and black wire and just put a jumper in between them. So yeah, I have this hooked up to the 4-pin uh, the Molex. Uh, now the red wire on uh, your thermoelectric cooler needs to go to the yellow wire. 
because the yellow on your power supply is 12 volts and that is a 15 volt thermoelectric cooler. So 12 is much closer than 5, 5 being the red wire on your PSU. Now the temperature display on the Pentium 4 is not correct. I've tried without the, uh, that actually on and it stays at 29 degrees Celsius. I tried with it on, stays at 29 degrees Celsius. So what I think happened is by turning that on first, then the computer, the CPU got so cold it either broke the sensor and is causing a false reading, or the sensor was already broken because this is a, a friend's computer that I was given. Now, like I said, this is the third try. Uh, if I put the temperature probe on there first and then turn it on, it fries the temperature probe and it just reads uh, LO. So I'm going to lift this up slide a temperature probe underneath it real time, put it back on while the computer's still running. Hopefully I can do it before the CPU overheats and the motherboard shuts off the computer. Then hopefully we get a actual reading on here and then I'll run Prime 95. I can find number three, temp two, temp three. Okay, this time I'm gonna to go to the edge. But hopefully it's not as Freezingly cold. Temp three. Read something. Yeah, there we go. 0. 0.65 degrees Celsius. Now, let me explain where exactly this is. Uh, if this whole entire screen is my CPU, the temperature sensor is right there in the corner. So it is not in the middle underneath the thermoelectric cooler because that was frying out my uh, my temperature probes. So right now we're reading 5.2. I'm going to push down slightly. 4.9, 4.7, 4.6. So I'm going to go ahead and start up Prime 95 on my screen. Uh, sorry that I'm not using a screen recording program. Uh, it just seems sort of stupid to record my screen when the temperature is being shown to my left. Okay, I'm going to do a uh, small F FTs, which should be most of the CPU. And now I'm going to push back down on this. So, um, thermal electric cooling is definitely a, uh, viable method of cooling a computer. Uh, that's about it for the video. So I'm going to turn off the computer now. And